live from Nostalgic Comics. Oh, Nostalgic Books and Comics. <laughs> In San Gabriel, California, this is the Multiverse Comic Show. Now, here is your host, Pete Malini. Malini. <laughs> What's going on? It's it's another Wednesday, mm-hmm. which means two things. Wednesday always means two things. It means brand new comic books mm-hmm. and for our viewers, it means another episode of the Multiverse Comic Book Show. How's it going, Pete? It's going, man. I'm, I'm, I'm still recovering from the weekend. I know that this past weekend uh, we, we we were at the Long Beach mm-hmm. Comic Con. Yeah. It was fun. It was, it, was, uh, it was a long, long weekend. Long weekend. Uh, we, we were there. I was there Saturday. You were there all weekend yeah. promoting the East LA Comic Book Art and Pop Culture Expo. Mm. Where we realized how much of a mouthful it is. It is a mouthful. We have to like explain it to, to people uh, all day long. Yeah. It, it's a bit of a mouthful, but it, 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 it's our mouthful. Exactly. Crazy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was fun, and uh, I haven't done a big show in that. I forgot how long those shows could be, man. Good God. Because uh, the, 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 on Saturday, the show floor was open 9.30 for VIPs and 10 a.m. for general attendees. Mm-hmm. And that went all the way till 7 p.m. Yeah. That was a full like, nine hours. Nine and a half hours. Yes. That was a if you got into the VIP. And, oh, my Lord. And technically, we were there. We were there. <laughs> we were there 12 hours because we got there at 7. <laughs> my God. Yeah. So, but it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. We, we got to, yeah, you got to talk to a lot of vendors. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got to uh, interact with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. We, got, we got a lot of fans. Uh, we got to go to yeah. the, we got to go to DC panel. That was cool. We got yeah, we went to see the DC Nation panel. Mm-hmm. Or we uh, our, our, our good friend Dan Daniel, <laughs> his usual dance off. Mm-hmm. Uh, Christopher Priest mm-hmm. and two other names who I can't recall. The writer, the writers of Teen Titans and the writers of Detective Comics, yeah. and apparently announced this past weekend. The outsiders yeah, okay. returning. So a lot of fun stuff. Yeah, a lot of fun stuff. Uh, and then, uh, Chris Reeves would like to write Deathstroke all the way to, <laughs> to 50. Issue 50. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that would be possible. That would be great. <laughs> I love how he made that reference to, like, he's like, oh, if you don't go to that that, uh, that milestone issue, the book got canceled. You, you got, got fired. fired. Yeah, you got fired. Yeah. You got the 48. Yeah. You got fired. You get the 50. It's fine. Job well done. Job well done. Exactly. You can walk away at 50. Yeah. <laughs> and no one, no one will think you get fired. You can get fired at 50. They'll think, like, okay, you got the 50. Yeah. You got to where you want it. That's what you want to do. It's a culmination. Yeah. You know, because I remember the, in back in the days, I remember like those quarter those quarter post issues, like you know the the twenty five or the mm-hmm. fifty, seventy five, not so much. But yeah. I mean, in some cases, yeah, I remember some X Men books you know, yeah. about seventy five. But you know, getting to that that that, yeah. that quarter pole up to a hundred, yeah. and then I, after a hundred, then we'd celebrate again until the next hundred. But you yeah. know, twenty five, fifty, one hundred, those were the big issues. Like, yeah, big stuff would happen. I remember Spider Man number twenty five. It was a big story with him and Excalibur. Mm-hmm. I was like, ah, after the, the, <laughs> and then I didn't, uh, Spider-Man 50, something else big happened. Yeah. I remember the olden days. I used to yeah. be like all this time yeah. uh, in, in, in comics. Uh, it, 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 this huge culmination of, of story arcs would lead to like, oh, Spider-Man, I mean, Spider-Man 300. That, 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 that was a big one. Yeah. It was a big, the big knockdown drag out fight between Spider-Man and Venom. And that's yeah. when they turned Venom into a good guy after that. Yeah. You yeah. realize that Spider-Man, like, you, you actually save people. Oh, <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> What have I done? I'm going to San Francisco. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true. Like, if you think about it, because I think, like, like, for instance, like, especially independent books, like, when they get to high numbers, they make a big deal about it. But something like, like, I remember, like, Spawn. I remember Spawn was always going to be like, oh, we're going to end at 50. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, no, nope, we're going to go to the 100. Uh-huh. And then at 100, they're like, no, nope, we're going to keep going. <laughs> like, we're going we're to see how far this goes. And uh, where, where, where is old Spawn Rooney at? Oh, two something, for fuck's sake. Yeah. <laughs> Good God. But it's just like, you know, like, it's, um, yeah, as a matter of fact, when it used to be a big number, but now, you know. 50, yeah. That's why I, like, I, think, I think Christopher Priest is going to operating under the, the old rules, yeah. like, get to 50. Yeah. You feel achieved. Mm-hmm. Now, Marvel doesn't even let it get booked no. near that. And DC still does. I yeah. mean, like, we got to, we got to action 1,000. Yeah, we did, yeah. So Honestly, right. I think that's why they brought back the number, so mm-hmm. we can get to that nice magical number, then yeah. at some point... Uh, yeah, I think it was like early next year. Yeah, so yeah, that's like a thousand. Yeah. Like a thousand like, I think wow. it's like March or something like that, yeah. So that's pretty crazy. Well, Batman would have been up there, but they would have been that. Well, yeah. I'm sure it was if we get closer to a big number, like seven or eight hundred. No, like, it was already... Cause, uh, yeah, no. 
It was like was six, it Batman Six Hundred that the one that came in the envelope that was yeah. the Lacey virus? Yeah. It was like Batman versus Bane Two: The yeah. Rematch. This time, no drugs. Oh, Rosa Lamont. Hello, Rosa. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Yeah, that's true, huh? Because it. Remember that? That was like six hundred. Yeah. Like, like five hundred was the Nightfall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> five hundred was Nightfall. So, oh yeah, that's true. Oh, like, that's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's twenty years ago. Yeah. So if, if they had kept the, the that Batman numbering yeah. where it was, it was it, 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 I think it'd be approaching like seven hundred. Oh, I, I, it probably would have passed seven hundred already. Right? Probably in the eight hundreds. Yeah, was it the? I think the punch was like in the eight hundred area, was it? I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was. Uh, who knows, man? <laughs> who, who who knows? Who remembers these things? Yeah. Crazy nerds like yeah. us. <laughs> We're the ones who remember the ridiculous things yeah. like that. But uh, yeah, well, okay. These big magical giant numbers. Yeah, and it's not, it's not, like, what's the thing too, you think about it, like, like, you had people like Peter David, who was on the Hulk for 20 years. Yeah. Like, that's just never going to happen again. Never. Like, no one's going to be on a book for that. Never. Now, if you last two years, yeah. you're a freaking wizened old man. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a grizzly old veteran if you last two years on a book. Well, I think the other thing, it, it's kind of sucks, is that, like, so it's something like, like, uh, Dan Slott was on Spider-Man for 10 years. And he always talks about how, like, he loved it. But there were so many people they complained. They were just like, like, why are they still letting him write this book? Like, you know, oh, like, we need a fresh voice. Yeah. Uh. And it's just kind of like... Fuck you. <laughs> I'm building the universe here. And people don't realize that, you know. Yeah. Javier Hernandez says uh, on Facebook, what? Pete's on TV 24 hours a day. Look at you, man. <laughs> it's it. You're the mayor of comics. You're, gra- you're, you're running for governor running of for comics. Governor. <laughs> you're, you're the mayor of comics in East Los, but you're, you're going to run for governor mm-hmm. of comics in Southern California. In Southern California. <laughs> That's <laughs> true, right? It's the sash. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, I say it's weird that people don't stay on books that long anymore, man. Like, like Invincible, which I love that book, and uh, that went for a long time, but it still was like, you know, they, they ended that book, you know, it was like, and I feel that book could have kept on going, and just, you know. Kirkman's like, ah, oh, damn, done. Yeah. I'm gonna make some more zombies. Because Walking Dead's been going for a while, but I mean. Yeah, yeah. it's up to the. Uh, Few years, yeah. eight years now. I think it was nine. No, because because like the the was was the TV show started like twenty ten. Yeah. It's been eight years. It, it's been going for a while. For a couple of years before that, yeah. so it's, it's been around for ten years. But because it's, it's like one hundred and sixty issues, is it right now? Yeah. Like they come to a normal. Yeah. One once a month. But that was, the thing with Walking Dead though was it was like it was one of those things where like it would go off for a little while and then it would come back and then and then it was oh, the that, book itself. Yeah. Like they would, they would, uh, do it and do it for a little bit. hiatuses? Yeah. Much like Saga? Yeah. But it wasn't nearly as long. The Saga's going on a one year hiatus. Oh, really? They just announced that. And, uh, which is really messed up. Like, I don't want to spoil anything, but you... They left it on a big cliffhanger. They left it on a huge cliffhanger. Oh, boy. <laughs> Dicks. And he's like, oh, we'll be back in a year. <laughs> we'll see you. We'll see you in late 2019. Yeah. <laughs> so... Happy uh, Merry Christmas. Yeah, exactly. We miss all the holidays. <laughs> But uh, I'm sure the book that you will have passed in the book too. Oh, just well, to fuck with us. Yeah. Well, they were like two. Yeah, one year later. Yeah. <laughs> They've been tempted to be in that book for a little while, but it's like it's kind of crazy that they, you know. It's so like a twenty-year time jump, but the, the the daughter will be like totally grown up. Yeah, right. <laughs> we find out what the hell's going on this whole time. <laughs> They're like the young justice. Yeah. There you go. Right. <laughs> Five-year time jump. <laughs> but uh, what's it called? What's it about? Oh, it's a comic news. There's a lot of TV and movie news that we gotta get to, but the comic news, uh, they're giving, they're bringing back, uh, uh, Marvel bringing back a title that, that people are kind of excited about. What are they bringing back? Uh, we're getting Superior Spider-Man back. Superior Spider-Man? Yeah. Wait, so the, the, the Doc Ock Spider-Man? Mm-hmm. So, uh... Um, what, are we getting, like, a poppy universe where Peter Parker never regained his no, brain? Oh, no, no, no. See, that would have been interesting, but no, no, they're gonna be doing, because there's this uh, spider get story that is going on right now, mm-hmm. and there's gonna be, uh... During, uh, what was it called? Secret Empire. And it, it, Evil Cap. Um, Evil Cap, Hydra Cap, put together this, uh, this, this own Avengers. It was made of villains and the like, Superior Spider Man was one of those. Well, Doc Ock was part of that team. Because uh-huh. at the end of the, there was this other arc where Doc Ock got on top of a new body. And it's a weird amalgamation of his body and Peter Parker's body. So he's got spider powers. Uh huh. But it kind of looks like him, and so he created. Sorry, was he like green and yellow and hydro colors? Yeah, he and he was a superior octopus, and uh-huh. uh, and so now there's gonna be a superior octopus one shot during Spider Geddon, and they announced post Spider Geddon 
he's going back to the Superior Spider-Man costume. Really? Yeah. So that Doc Ox fighty is going back. And it's, it's, it's fan favorite. I mean, like personally for myself, like I felt that that book could have gone a lot longer than it did. I know people were like, I was in that same boat. Like when they, when they first announced it, I was like, oh, this is real gimmicky. But then once I read it, I was like, this is really good. <laughs> I, I think I've said on this show many times. The only thing that bothered me was Doc Ock masturbating to the memory of Peter Parker having sex with Mary Jane Watson. This is not a PG show, folks. No. Yeah, that was, that was a little weird. That bothered me yeah. a lot. Yeah. I was like, oh, come on! I mean, yes, but no! <laughs> weird! It really is really weird. Uh, so they're bringing him back. They're bringing him back as the first Spider-Man. And it sounds really interesting. It sounds like he's... It, it's kind of like... Um, because Marvel's been doing this a lot, like, like Infamous Iron Man, and like, you know, um, when you get these villains that are like, oh, I could be a good guy, like, uh, <laughs> it's not so hard to be a good guy, these guys have it so easy. Yeah. <laughs> and so what do you mean we don't get paid? <laughs> but Superior Spider-Man sounds pretty cool, it's basically, uh, the, uh, Otto's ego is like, I could be a better Spider-Man, I was a better Spider-Man, I'm going to be a better Spider-Man, you know, so it's, it sounds kind of cool. Yeah. You know, shit's gonna go bad. Like, <laughs> oh, it's gonna go south real quick. Yeah. Like, and then Peter's gonna be like, the fuck is this shit? <laughs> oh, and then classic, he's moving to San Francisco. Well, what is this? <laughs> like, yeah, I just mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Venom goes good. Well, to San Francisco. <laughs> apparently, that's where you go when you're a reformed villain. Good. You're gonna go to San Francisco. <laughs> that's like your West Coast of LA or fuck LA. No. You can get shot. Yeah. <laughs> go to San Francisco yeah. if you wanna be reformed. Foreign villain. Yeah. So it's like, eh, we'll see, what, we'll see where they go with that. I mean, I like that book. Uh, it's not going to be Dan Slott. I was about to say, but, it's not Dan. But, I mean, the character's pretty strong. I mean, I think it's Christos Gage is right now. He's going to back up with, the, with, with his uh, little person girlfriend? Maybe, because there was a whole... It's me again! It's a different penis, <laughs> but it's me! There, there was a whole subplot during... Uh, Phone conspiracy. Uh-huh. Um, it was pretty creepy. Like Doc was like he was like he had trapped his he uploaded his mind into the living brain, and Peter was like using it as his assistant. He didn't know it was Doc Doc the whole time, <laughs> and he had built a machine where he could upload his consciousness into a, into a living body. But what had happened was um, he couldn't put it back into Peter Parker's body. Honestly, this Peter Parker could beat him, mm-hmm. and so he had to find another body. And then at one point, his his ex girlfriend was seeing this other guy and he's uh-huh. like, I'm gonna blow into that dude. And uh and it didn't work. And so what he ended up doing was he ended up hacking something and he get, he got him a job to make a move away. Mm-hmm. And he was just totally messing with her like <laughs> Oh I guess he ain't getting back with her. No. Stock her bunch. Well because she found out too that he's Otto Octavius and it's <laughs> like You're not Peter Parker. And Otto Octavius is a bad dude. <laughs> like, you know? a bad man. Yeah. Bad man. Yeah. It, it's funny you mention it because uh I, I, I got to see some of the uh, the, the new Spider-Man video game mm-hmm. that came out. I don't want to get too much of it, but it is comic related. Yeah. Big Spider-Man video game. Yeah. Like in this video game, Doc Ock, or, or I should say Otto Octavius, yeah. is like Peter's mentor. Like yeah. Peter works for him in, 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 in the storyline of this. Yeah. And, like he even helps him design the Spider-Man costume. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Uh, yeah. yeah that, that, I guess it's Doc Ock is the one responsible for the white spider. Oh, that's kind of cool. He's like, there's some sort of scientific reason. Oh, white, you know, absorbs more energy. Or like, yeah. like, there's some sort of thing where yeah. it's like, I don't know if like, the suit's like solar power or something. <laughs> like, they show, like, you see this notepad where, like, uh, Otto's like, I love some notes for you. <laughs> since, since you're helping Spider-Man, we're going to suit. Well, uh-huh. He, he yeah. didn't figure it out. Yeah. Uh, it, it was pretty, it's pretty cool. I was like, oh, I'm like, oh, that's and then that, that's how I wound up with the crazy whiteness all yeah. over. That was, a, that was Otto Octavius's. Like, hey, hey, Peter, here, great assistant here. Let, let me help you help Spider-Man. <laughs> So when are they gonna set that up? They have future games. You know, like Otto takes over and becomes superior Spider-Man. And like, oh know. God, I know your thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Otto, but it's weird. Like this, the the, the, the no, Otto Octavius, he doesn't have the ball. It bothers uh, me. He yeah. has like like you know, kind of like what I got going on. <laughs> like nothing up top here and everything on the sides. Yeah. That's how that's how I was like. It was funny when I first heard him speak. I'm like, uh, I'm, like I'm, I'm watching my bro- I, I just told my my brothers really go watch and I, I saw him playing. I'm like, oh. What's up? Who's this guy? Like, That's Doc Ock. I'm like, no, it's not. Yeah. He doesn't have the ball. He doesn't, have the ball. He doesn't have, like know how to do classes. Because yeah. even like, 
I'm from Molina, kind of had that hair going. <laughs> you going for he, was, like, he was rocking yeah. that. Movie. He was rocking the. He was rocking the Mo Howard. Yeah, the Mo Howard. <laughs> rocking, rocking the young Gohan. But I figured that that, that, that that was all Sam Raimi. You know? Sam Raimi was like, you have to do this this way, and like. <laughs> yeah, Sam Raimi being the nerd, they would have, like granted, you know, I give Sam Raimi a lot of shit for that trilogy, but he did strike. He did his best yeah. to defy Sony and like stick yeah. as much comic shit in there. I could. I mean, that's the. You could just tell just on the fact. Look at that Sandman. Like he looked like he was straight out of the comic book. The well, way he was dressed, like, you know. Yeah. Like, it was just, the, the yeah. shitty, the shitty Freddy Krueger esque <laughs> fucking <laughs> sweater. But yeah, it, it's kind of. It's crazy. interesting. Yeah. So yeah, that's funny that you mentioned uh, Doc Ock, and they, they they kind of have that mentor mentee relationship mm-hmm. in this game. I like it's like it, 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 it's always been very intertwined. Obviously, yeah. the octopus and the spider. See, it kind of makes it, it makes more sense, kind of really, what you think about because it. it's always been him and like, Kirk Connors. Mm-hmm. Like Kirk Connors is his mentor and that. And yeah. But it kind of makes more sense. You think about it, if you go into the comics, like, like that got married Aunt May at one point. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like so. I loved her aunt. I loved your aunt. Yeah. Like, even, it, didn't that, like, come up in the freaking, um, in Dance Lot's final? Yeah. Like, where, like, Doc Ock helped out. Yeah. Because he, he remembers how much he loved Aunt May. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, th- I thought that was, that was, that was a cute little callback. Yeah. yeah. To, to, like, oh, yeah. He was with Aunt May. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. I loved her. <laughs> Yeah, I always liked Doc because he was always like that, really cocky, like, he just like, he's like, oh, I'm going to do it because I'm the best, and, you know, and you get to fight these villains because he's like, oh, no, you're an idiot, like, I know what I'm doing, like, <laughs> I just remember, like, I always thought this costume was totally weird when I was a kid, you know, the, 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 the green, the green, orange, the jumpsuit, yeah, the jumpsuit, but, like, early on, it was just like a, like, a green peacoat, yeah, and then they, they would, they put and they put the yellow boots and yeah. the yellow gloves later, like to make it le- look more like a super and less like a, an orderly. <laughs> well, did you know there was a thing that I think it's kind of new to you? When he used to wear those goggles, it was because he had burnt his eyes, and so like, he's like super sensitive to the light. So like the one way Spider-Man would beat him was just take the goggle off him, and he'd be like, oh, I'm blind. Ah, curses! Hey, Judy, thank you for joining us, Judy. I feel, I feel like every time someone waves, I feel the need on it. I should wave back. <laughs> So they, what did they never do with Doc Ock? He never like shot ink or anything. Like he never like. <laughs> huh. I remember like that Spider-Man ride. Like he yeah. shot fire from his like yeah. things. I guess I was just doing the three D effect. Yeah. The 3D ride. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah, what's, huh. yeah. Interesting stuff going so on. So before we get to the big thing. Oh wait, wait, wait. there's a big thing. I'm there, sure there people was, are like waiting for us yeah. to talk about it. There was there was a, a super misleading headline. Okay. Did you read about this about Batman? Uh, John Hamm? John Hamm. John, he wants to play. No, no, well, okay, so I... I he's interested. I, he's always been, like, not... He, he's, he had never been interested in doing super, superhero yeah. roles before. But I think it was, like, from everything yeah. I've read about, like, you know, with Black Panther yeah. and, like, seeing, like, a, like, more recently, like, oh, these things can actually be good. Mm-hmm. They're not just... They're not just a bunch of tribe. Yeah, well, because uh, I saw the video clip where he was talking about it. Mm-hmm. Apparently, he's been reading comics since he was nine years old. Yeah. Like he's a big comic guy. Dude, he's a nerd. Yeah. If, if you ever listen to the Doug Lewis Movies podcast, yeah. when he comes, because he'll go on. Yeah. Big time television and movie star John Hamm <laughs> goes on a fucking podcast with fucking, like, with his freaking comics, and he beats their asses in movie trivia. He's a nerd. Yeah. He's a, a very handsome nerd. <laughs> That's a handsome man. I'm not gay, but I'd fuck him. <laughs> That's a handsome man. I mean, he's a handsome man. I wouldn't go that far. I'd go five for him. <laughs> <I'd go by. laughs> but, uh, no, so I watched it because everyone posts this thing about he wants to do it, he wants to do it. Mm-hmm. So I finally watched the clip. Watch the clip. Oh, yeah. He, he talks about, yeah, he talks about like, what you said. Like, he, like, he liked Black Panther. He, he saw what the, what kind of movies can be now because he's like, he, he knows the source material. Mm-hmm. And he basically said that if they came to him with a good script, he would he'd do, do that. it. Oh, okay. He'd be interested in doing it. And No, he'd be interested. Mm-hmm. And so the guy asked him, like, oh, would you do it? And he said, like, wow, well, he said, I'd have to work out a lot, which he, he said he doesn't like doing. But, but he said he'd be into it. I, I, I can see that. Like, John Hamm, Batman. Well, because I, I, everything kept saying, like, since freaking season one of Mad Men, him walking around in suits all day, like, oh, he, he looks like freaking Bruce Wayne. Yeah. He, he'd have that Bruce Wayne <laughs> thing, like, down pat. <laughs> and then he has the jaw. Yeah. He has the jawline to be Batman. It's funny that everyone saw, saw Batman like that. Green Batman, I always thought he'd be a Pursuit Man. Well, yeah, no, you can stick in that suit. Oh, yeah, he, he, he has like, the good yeah. looks to be. Like, he could be either one. But I think the, the, the problem with being Pursuit Man would be, like, no one would mistake him just because he's wearing glasses. Like, no one would... No, he's too handsome. <laughs> yeah. He's too handsome. <laughs> but, yeah, so that was a big thing that they are talking about, you know. Um, yeah, 
be like, if it's good and if they, if, yeah. if it's right, he would be interested. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I want to do it. Yeah. We're like, like all the websites were like, he wants to be Batman. Yeah. Like, no, no. In the right situation. Yeah. Like, he, he's not just gonna do it just to do it. Yeah. Well, you know what? We get to do it again because we're talking about Batman. Mm-hmm. Have we seen what well, King Phoenix looks like right now? No. <laughs> you know he's doing that Joker movie. And I kind of don't want to see it. And uh, no, it's not. It's not even the. It's not even the makeup. This is just him walking around. No, I. That, that, I no, I know what you're saying. I, I heard the words you said. I, I don't like what you're saying. <laughs> and uh, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. See, I couldn't picture Joaquin Phoenix as Joker. But now you can. But I gave it that. No, 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 I couldn't picture. Well, this Joker. is true. This is true. However many. Yeah. Oh, God, that was like 10, 11 years ago. Yeah. Two thousand and eight was the Dark Knight. So we were bitching about it in two thousand and seven. Yeah. <laughs> I put a picture uh, of Joker. He's a Joker. He's a Joker. What the fuck? Yeah. No way. The dude from freaking A Knight's Tale? Yeah. So we have, I have a couple pictures here. Uh, I mean, apologize to the Twitch audience. You have to go Google it yourself. No. Just, can, can we split screen? Can we just... <laughs> no. I feel bad for viewers. I don't know. Wait, hold on. Uh, I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Oh, that's fine. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's go with this one. This is, this is one that's really creepy. This one's bothering me. We're losing viewers. <laughs> this is the one that's like... I, I can't with these pictures. Yeah. All right, then go, go, go show, show the other one. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. Uh, if I, I don't know about this. All right, there we go. So, oh god. <laughs> I mean, I can kind of see it. Yeah. I'm like, I, I'm shocked there isn't already been a Photoshop image of this yeah. of like with white skin. Mm-hmm. Oh, Joker white. Yeah. Obviously, he's white. <laughs> Obviously. There we go. And then there's another uh, great photo. I mean, I can see it. Yeah, I can see it now more. That first one bothered me, <laughs> but with these, these last two, I, 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 I could see him because he has that gauntlet. I mean, he clearly is like he's doing the Beyonce diet of like yeah. water and cayenne pepper. <laughs> Yeah, that looks like a freaking skeleton. So he's got that, Joker. And he's got that pointy chin now, and uh, yeah, it's it's creepy. This is not Commodus from fucking uh, yeah. Gladiator or from freaking Johnny Cash. This is, I, that, that picture right there. Yeah, like he totally is a Joker right there. Yeah, he, he totally does. He totally does. So I'm, I'm curious. Um, what the scary thing is that like uh, we don't learn our lesson of like we you don't you, you don't get a. <laughs> yeah, I am. I, I was in such distress, Rosa. And uh, yeah, Joanne, oh, John Hammond, he had slipped back his hair. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> but well, we don't learn our lesson. Like, we don't hire method actors to be the Joker, right? We're not supposed to do that. No, anymore. we're not. <laughs> no, no, no. We lost Heath Ledger because of it. Jared Leto proved that. No. That's no. Anyway. No. And, I, and what's his name? Uh, well, King Phoenix is pretty method. He is quite. Like, he he really faked quitting acting to become a rapper yeah. for a movie. <laughs> so I don't know. It's, it's you know. No no no. God, I, I you know it's funny that you mentioned like uh, method actors. I can only imagine if freaking recently retired uh, Daniel Day Lewis had tried to be the oh. Joker. He, he would he would have murdered someone. Yeah. <laughs> he would have had to right. He would have killed a man. Yeah. <laughs> Like in, in the, only in, only in the way that Joker can, he would have murdered someone. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be fish with smiles on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I, I killed them with chemicals. Uh, and what best had come with Smilex. <laughs> I killed them with laughing gas. <laughs> I mixed the laughing gas with cyanide. Yeah. So I don't know. I can see it though. I can see it now. And Th- those last two photos, that first photo, oh my god, no, he looked like Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> No, that, that's no. why I was in such a stress. I'm like, oh, God, no, I don't like it. I don't like and, it. And there's this really, uh, I couldn't pull it up, but there was a video uh-huh. where he's talking. He's on some panel. And I don't know what they asked him. But he went like but he's, 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 he's just his eyes bugged out. And he, it, it was answered. <laughs> it was really creepy. Okay. 
Oh, there it is. I don't know why my finger doesn't work. Yeah, so. Huh. I can see it, but the only problem is it's still. Is that is that the Scorsese one or is that the. I, this is confusing. Well, we have three Jokers in the, in the DC universe. We have three Joker movies. It's the dude that made. Uh, wasn't he? Because Chris wasn't going to direct it, right? He was going to produce it. Oh, was that what it was? I think it was. Oh. But then uh, the one that's the 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 Joaquin Phoenix one. Mm-hmm. It's the dude that did the Hangover movies, and he did um, Todd Phillips. Yeah. But he did that other movie. What was it? The the, the Big Short. Didn't you write that? Yeah. Oh, I like that movie. Yeah. But that was written by Adam McKay. Yeah. <laughs> I like Adam McKay. Yeah. But he got it. He gave us Anchorman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> he gave us the Anchorman. So, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we wrote, yeah, we wrote Anchorman. Won an Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what was it the other one? I was just about the, the Boy, Jim had the, the, the <laughs> creepy dean from Community. Oh, Won no. an Oscar. <laughs> for screenwriting. Even the, 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 the creepy guy, Nat Paxson. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know, we'll see on that one. Uh, kind of looking forward to this Joker movie now. Oh, okay, uh, well that restores my faith a little bit in that movie. Mm-hmm. I'm like, alright, cool. I, I, yeah. I, I am not opposed to it. Now yeah, that, that we see his gaunt face. <laughs> he has his gaunt face. <laughs> and as soon as those photos get freaking photoshopped by oh, some like I'm, I'm sure Photoshop that's wizard. I'm sure that's already out there. I'm sure. I, how they, I, I, they have to be out there already. Yeah, they have to be. If you found these images, they had some. It's funny, because, and this is a film a couple days ago, and I think I was talking to Rudy, and he mentioned it, and I'm like, what are you talking about? And I looked it up, and I was like, holy shit. Like, it creeped me out, man. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the big thing that happened big this morning. Let's, uh, so this is, it's a very confusing story. It is. So, because uh, as I, uh, one of my favorite lyrics from Queens of Stone Age, the truth has always had three sides. Yeah. Yours, mine, and how it went. Yeah. <laughs> it's the truth. So this morning... It was announced that Henry Cavill was, was done with Superman. He's no he, longer going to be Superman. No longer be Superman. And then uh, his agent, which apparently is The Rock's ex-wife. Yeah, yeah. Annie Garcia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she came out and said, "Oh, uh, we're still talking. Like, don't, don't think it's over yet." Uh huh. And then uh, Warner Brothers came out and they gave a typical corporate. Oh, we like making movies with him, but they didn't say anything else. Like, you know, they really mm-hmm. didn't give an answer. But then, did you see that video? So Henry Campbell posted a video where he's wearing a shirt that says, like, Krypton Jim. Or Kry- yeah. No, I haven't seen this. It says Krypton uh, Jim. I, I, I saw all the headlines this morning before I went to work, and I yeah. worked all day yeah. until I got here. Yeah, so he, he's wearing this shirt, the muscle shirt, it says Krypton Jim. And then there's, like, a song playing, uh, but it's, like, dogs barking. The, the lyrics, the, the themer, and he like he puts up a Superman figure, and that's it. It's such a weird. Like, what is happening? Yeah. Why is this so weird? Yeah. So we don't know. We don't know if, if, if he's actually not Superman anymore. Um, also, it's just that it's not because yeah, everything Hollywood Reporter. Yeah, I was saying that like that, that freaking Apple or morning. Mm-hmm. Well, everyone was saying that it was done. It was done, but then apparently not. But they keep going back and forth and. Everyone's speculating that what it is, it's their, it's a contract negotiation because apparently he only has one more movie uh-huh. on his contract. It was supposed to be Justice League 2 and, and, and no. Yeah, it was supposed to be Justice League 2. When that got scrapped, he wanted it to be Man of Steel 2. Uh-huh. But Warner doesn't want to make that movie for some reason. And so they were going to use that last movie for a freaking Shazam cameo. Oh, really? Like that was going to be the last movie on his contract. Hmm. And they were going to renegotiate it. But apparently... They're not even that interested in renegotiating it because they want to shift the franchise to a Supergirl movie. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. But the thing is, and it's funny because all this stuff is in the news now, like you know, like in the real news, <laughs> right? And you can tell that these people that are writing about this like don't understand how comic books work because all the articles I read were like, oh, if they shift into a Supergirl uh, a franchise, he's a baby in that. It doesn't make sense. And I'm like, that's not how, how comic books work. <laughs> you, know? like, you don't understand. Yeah. So They're not real. Yeah. <laughs> They're not real. Yeah. But see, and, 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 and then on top of that, you know, at San Diego Comic Con, they had announced that the official name for the movie is The World of DC. Mm-hmm. So the Supergirl movie the, doesn't even have to be in that same continuity. It could be something else, yeah, because yeah. all these movies, they no longer are connected. Yeah. That's why the Joaquin Phoenix Joker could have nothing to do with the no longer Batman, Batflick movies. And it, so, yeah, so that, that whole, this whole continuity is kind of falling apart because 
Affleck's pro- is out, right? Because yeah. he's in rehab right now. So yeah. Like, well, I'm sure he's out. Yeah, he's a little bit busy with, you know, recovering from <laughs> yeah. being an alcoholic. But, so, do you think that, as, uh, the stuff I read was that uh, people think that it's, they're just trying to sweep all the Snyder stuff away. Because it, Snyder, he did cast Momoa, and he cast, uh, what's his face, The Flash. Mm-hmm. Ezra Miller. Yeah, and I think he was one of the deciding votes for the Wonder Woman uh, actors. But the thing is, like, but his big thing is he's going to do the Batman Superman movie. So like, I don't know if they're trying to like, you know. It, it, it could be possible yeah. that, like, that they're, they're trying to do a soft reboot of yeah. like it, because okay, some people like what he did. Mm-hmm. I feel a lot of people don't. Yeah. I mean, he, clearly, I mean, the the greatest argument I've made in the last few years, like we had a movie with Batman and Superman, that should have made it yeah. two billion dollars. That should have been like the biggest movie, one of the biggest movies of all time. Yeah. And it made five hundred million. Yeah. They probably spent that much promoting the movie. Yeah. See, and it, see, yeah, it was not as successful as it should have mm-hmm. been. Like, like the first time we're having like those because like, obviously each of them had, had giant movies. Yeah. The Dark Knight made a billion dollars, mm-hmm. and you put you put a movie with Batman and Superman in it, yeah. and Wonder Woman, yeah. and all the friggin' the bells and whistles they did. Mm-hmm. That movie should have been one of the biggest movies of all time. It should have kicked the Avengers right in the balls. Yeah. But no, it, it didn't, yeah. and they followed it up. I mean, they, they doubled down, did this Justice League movie, and then also that movie was like the lowest grossing movie of all the of that that, that yeah. DC you know the current continuity. Yeah. Like you have a Justice League movie issue that should have that should have been their Avengers, oh, yeah. and they blew it. See, my, my argument has always been that like. I, I've had problems going back to like Man of Steel. I didn't, I didn't enjoy that movie. And you're a Superman guy. And I think my biggest like I remember I was talking to someone once, uh, and she and she made a good point. She's like, well, I think that's why it bothered me was that she was telling me that uh, when she saw Man of Steel, that there was an old man and his grandson watching this movie. And at, at one point when it got really dark and really dark, he took him out. Like he was like, no, nope, we're leaving. We're not watching this. And it's kind of like that's that, that, that's where it failed. We're like. A Superman movie should be suitable for a child. Yeah. You know, it should be easy to follow for a child. It's Superman. Like, it's a very... Uh, it's an iconic character. Yeah. To, to paraphrase uh, what a DC publisher Dan Dio said, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, those are the iconic yeah. characters of DC Comics. They, those characters have been around for 80, 80 years. Yeah. They, they, they are a brand. I mean, they're, they're, they're right. I, I, I would dare say that those characters are right up there with, like, a Mickey Mouse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like they're, they're like they're, they're identi- those characters are identifiable around the world. It yeah. doesn't matter what language you speak or where you're mm-hmm. from. You see that S, you know that Superman. Yeah. And I get I think that if, to to your point, when Man of Steel made Superman an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like this whole darkness and like oh, like oh don't say people. Yeah. Like, <laughs> be a dick. Go be a lumberjack. And it's funny because I remember like uh, I remember seeing the trailer for it, and when like it, it, the, that first trailer was very Nolan esque. Like you uh-huh. see him flying, and there's no sound, and yeah, and it's like you know you see the little boy with the, with the tape, you know, the, the towel wrapped around his, you know, it's very Nolan esque. Mm-hmm. But then you see the movie, you're like, what is this, right? Yeah, I, I remember. Yeah, this, when when yeah. Man still came out, like, I, I was funny, I, I didn't see the, I don't remember I saw the theaters. Mm-hmm. I think I might have waited until it came. I, I I got a copy of it, mm-hmm. and I was just kind of like, what happened? I was yeah. like. Okay, I mean, the parts where he's like flying around and fighting, that yeah. is pretty uh, you know, dynamic. Yeah. You know, the, it's a no, word I've been using a lot. But my, my favorite scene in that movie, Man of Steel, is when he's learning to fly. And he's like, he's, and he's like laughing, and he's like having, he's having a good time. Like, that is such a great scene in that mm-hmm. movie. But after that, he's such a downer. <laughs> like, he's so. And so that, and, and that's the, the biggest thing I'm disappointed in is that I don't think Henry Cavill was a bad Superman. He just had bad material to yeah. work with. Um, and as much as people complain about Justice League, I really started seeing the Superman I wanted to see at the end. end. Like we used the Arctic breath. He saved that building full of people by literally lifting the building. Like and he flashed like I'm pushing it. Yeah, and then he raced the flash at the end. Like, yeah. And and that's all Josh Whedon. Like that's yeah. all Josh Whedon. Like because like, there's no way that, that was a Snyder, you know? No, like, there's no way. You know. And um and so I'm kind of disappointed in seeing that because because uh, I, I I think that you know like he would if been, he was given proper material and proper direction yeah. he could have been a, like an amazing he would have been an appropriate superhero yeah. but like under Zack Snyder it's just like he's an asshole yeah because he's 
He's gonna leave. You have one more. Like, he freaking crashes the fucking battle yeah. you know? He shows up and freaking fucks up with that battle you know? Yeah. Dick just freaking, he's like choking him out. Yeah, because they even kind of mess up that whole thing. Cause it's a classic superhero trope. It's like, yeah, they fight because they don't know who they, you know, one of the are. But then they always, like, figure out, oh, we're on the same side. Well, this one was like, oh, no, we're going to fight. We're going to fight. We're going to almost kill you. Yeah. And, like, save Martha. <laughs> and it's just like, oh. Like, you know. Like, like, it was like that, 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 I, I have to say, that's, that's the epitome of, like, why I hated BBS. Yeah. Right there. That was so fucking, <laughs> that's something out of a parody. Yeah. That's like, that, that's something that should have been a funnier die sketch. <laughs> save Martha. What? Your mom's name Martha? My mom's name Martha too. <laughs> and they see what happens. And then Yeah. Oh we're friends. Oh now we're friends. <laughs> yeah. It's like the the the, the, the stepbrothers be yeah. Can we just become best friends? <laughs> Our mom's at the same thing. Yeah. We should hang out. <laughs> you like dinosaurs? I fucking love dinosaurs. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so that came out today. So we don't I don't know. I don't know if he's actually gone. I don't know if it's just, you know. Everything I read before I went to work was that he was yeah. done. But now, but this new not, material. But I feel like it, it, he's, he's leaving it because uh, he really campaigned hard for that Witcher uh, Netflix thing. And it's a show for Netflix. Yeah, he, he's on it. He's, 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 you know. He's in. He's in, so. I don't know. I think he, he saw it coming. I think he knew, you know, this is this about over. And you He's know. not a dumb guy. Yeah. He's not a dumb yeah. guy. But here's the thing, the thing of, okay, so then it came out that Warner is interested in Michael B. Jordan. Oh, bro, they, oh yeah, they, that's another uh, thing. And, <laughs> and uh, that's a weird choice because, I mean, I get it. What? Is it a no, weird no. choice because he's black, Pete? <laughs> well, let me get to that, let me get to that. So here's the thing. I'm, I'm, just, yeah. um, I'm just giving some shit. Uh, see, here's the thing. The Witcher, he was Killmonger. He was Killmonger. Mm-hmm. Like, and he's, he's, he's also the Human he, Torch. And that terrible <laughs> the Human Torch. That uh, terrible uh, Josh Trank. Josh Trank shouldn't yeah. direct anything ever. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. I don't have a problem with casting him. But if they try to stick in the same universe and the whole thing. I, it, so does he have to be in a black universe? No, no, no. no. Black? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you're making it too easy. I'm sorry. You're like, you're like lobbing me these softballs. I'm like... Because <laughs> here's the thing. Like... If they make him Clark Kent, it'd be a little weird because there is kind of a president uh, for Black Superman. Black Superman. And there's two different characters you could be. Oh boy, here we go. You got freaking. You have source material here. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So the first character, uh, a little more recent character, uh-huh. uh, is, is Balzod. That was odd. Uh, he's, he's from the uh, Earth 2, uh, New 52 Earth 2 Society book. Where uh, Krypton didn't explode? No, no it, it still exploded. But, but they sent a black shot. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Uh, so what ended up happening in this book, in this in this timeline, uh, that was how the parents were executed for crimes on Krypton. Let me guess. They were executed <laughs> for being black. I need to stop. <laughs> I can't stop myself. <laughs> and he saw his parents die. Did you wrong meal? Uh, no, no, no. Damn it. I'm going to stop. Keep uh, going. He saw his parents die, and uh, his mom told him before she, di- before she died that, you know, Biden doesn't solve anything. So he became a pacifist. Um, and Jorel basically adopted him. He basically brought him in. He was, like, taking care of him. And when Krypton blew up, they sent Superman, Belzad, and, and uh, Supergirl. Yeah. <laughs> what? Can you only make ships for babies? Right. <laughs> you can't make a ship for an adult? Yeah. So they sent them all. Uh, the one that's really interesting in this timeline was that they kind of made him a love interest for Super Power Girl. Oh, okay. And so it was this whole the thing. Power Girl is the Earth 2 Super Girl. Yeah. And, uh, but it was really interesting because in, in, in the Earth 2 timeline, Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman died in the beginning. Oh, okay. And... He went into hiding because he realized he's a pacifist, but on Earth, he could destroy things with just a flick of his hand, like, you know? Yes, he's very strong. So it, 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 it really took a lot for him to come out and be Superman. Like, he took... In the, the, in the Earth 2 year. Yeah, in the Earth 2 year, he kind of took on the mantle of Superman. So it's, a really, it's a cool character, new character. They could do anything with it, essentially. 
See, like that'd be cool if they kind of if they use this movie to kind of introduce hyper time. Yeah, exactly. Like you, you, you start off, you show a whole bunch of different like variations of things. And then there's this other one. <laughs> there's another one. Okay, show us the other one. This is. Oh wait, uh, no, this this isn't the Stan Lee one. No, 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 no this isn't the Stan Lee one. So this is uh, Kelvin Ellis. Kelvin Ellis uh, was was created by Grant Morrison. Okay. And Kelvin Ellis is is a Superman where Jor-El and Laura were black. They were just the other, and they, the same continuity, right? But Kelvin, uh, he, well, he ended up in, in the Chicago, I think, and he was raised by. Uh, uh, this black family, and because they, they found his name was Cal Al, so they named Calvin, right? <laughs> and the thing about Calvin Al is, is that he became president. Oh, it's so like he worked his way up to becoming president, and it's kind of interesting. Where he hid the fact he was Superman the whole time. He hid the fact he was Superman, <laughs> and while being president, he's still Superman, and so he has Superman robots standing in for him. And he, I'm about to say, I'm like, wait, who in the Secret Service fucking notice if all of a sudden, whoop, hey, where'd the president go? Red alert, red alert, the eagle has left, the eagle has left. Um, so, does he have Superman robots be Superman or Superman robots be the president? He's the president. Be the, and then the other thing, too, is it. Sorry, I went to the bathroom. <laughs> what is going on? Let's decide some policy. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> And Grant used them a little bit. He used them for like one issue during his Jack and Comics run. Oh, okay. And then he put them in uh, Multiversity. Uh, the thing that is really interesting, I would love to see a, a, a series of this character, especially by Grant Morrison. Uh, Kelly Ellis defeated Brainiac, and then he uh, rehabilitated him. So Brainiac is basically running the country. That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not good at all. Hey, we, we rehab this evil computer program. Now it runs everything. <laughs> so they did the whole B-13 virus yeah. back in the day. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's two Superman, you know, we could do. Um, I feel like Michael B. Jordan is probably too young to be Calvin Ellis. Like, he'd be too young looking to be, like, a pro- It'd be kind of interesting, though, if you do it. Do just, it. Just, uh, just wrap his hair, you yeah. know? Uh, have you seen any pictures of uh, about, uh, Barack Obama looks like right now? It's, uh, it's pretty great. All you gotta do, gray up on like, hey, if we can make uh, Nick Fury Look young, we can make Michael B. Jordan look older. See, but see, with Michael B. Jordan, if he, if he were to go like Calvin Ellis, that'd be really interesting because then you'd have him not just be Superman, but but also the president of the United States running, you know, like on the road to the presidency. You know? like, yeah, that's kind of interesting, you know. But all the campaign. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, that, that's kind of where I'm at. You know, there, there is a uh, there is president for uh, for black Superman. And there is president, yes. And I think it'll We've had Black Hat of America yeah. and then Colin Books. Yeah. The truth. <laughs> but th- and then the other thing too is like I think with someone like a, a Val Zod, if they're gonna go Supergirl, like that works right in there because that was like her love interest, you know, in, in the comic book. So mm-hmm. I don't know, hey, uh, I don't see why not. It, yeah. It's comic books. They're not real. Yeah. So I just, my big fear is just like like is this uh, gonna be black? <laughs> black uh, black art, Clark Kent just like he played Black Johnny Storm. But then if you do, so they, I just think that's boring because if you do that, we're gonna retell the same story. We're gonna tell, we tell the same. We tell a new story. Yeah, we tell a new story. A different take on Superman. There's so many freaking Superman movies. You know, like this would be a different you know feel. You know. I <laughs> uh, see one of our one of our listeners really appreciate it. My name is Barack Obama. Fresh. <laughs> It also helped. I saw a video today. Oh. He totally took the nuts out of oh. a certain orange person. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. <laughs> nuts out. Well, there we go. So that, that's the possible future. No, uh, yeah, Superman, is, it's very it's very chaotic. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, like I said, if they kind of like toy around with this whole hyper time thing, yeah. show like, hey, there's multiple realities. Yeah. Well, like, hey, we can have them become the Green Lantern Superman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, that'd be so funny. If they did, did like a Batman Green Lantern movie, that'd be yeah. hilarious. Yeah. And that'd be so cool because then they if you set something like that up, here Cal can come back. He can come back. And they could just be like, oh, bullets. Yeah, he, he meets freaking this other Superman. Or like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> they can like, do they can travel. Oh, he, 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 you know, speeding bullets, Superman. Yeah. Like, oh, what? It, but that, that was always probably my favorite. Because uh, they were called Elseworlds back yeah. in the day. Like, my favorite Elseworlds were the speeding bullets. Where, oh, instead of the rocket landing in Kansas, the rocket carrying little Cal L landed in Gotham City. Yeah. To Bruce and Martha Wayne. <laughs> oh, we found this baby. <laughs> I guess I don't need to knock you up. <laughs> we'll 
Well, they had been bruised. Well, they had been bruised, and then, yeah. And they know. They still get killed, right? They still, they get, still killed. get killed. <laughs> I guess when he's a kid, he couldn't catch all the bullets. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Gotham doesn't get a lot of sun, yeah. so maybe he couldn't charge up fast enough. It's usually in uh, like way tone. <laughs> like it's quite fall. gray, so he wasn't quite full Superman when he was a kid. Couldn't save yeah. the bullets. and Yeah, so there's this book called Speeding Bullets. Yeah. And it was like, it's, it's, oh, what if, what if Superman landed in Gotham? Oh, he grew up and became Batman. With Superman powers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there was another one I really like. I forgot what it was called, but it was, it was, it was Emerald Knight? Was he, he comes he was Green Lantern. Yeah, yeah. where the Green Lantern ring finds um, Bruce Wayne or yeah. finds. I think Bruce Wayne. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know, it was such a weird book because at the end he like he gives all the superheroes Green Lantern rings and it's like he's the leader of the Earth. Green Lantern. Yeah. The Green Lantern Corps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, might as well give them all Green Lantern rings, hey? Yeah. Why not? Let's get into the comics. This week's comics. We, 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 we waxed poetically for 46 minutes. A little bit more than we normally do, but hey, that's, that's the luxury of doing this stuff online. We, we don't have like a hard out. We're like, oh, sorry, we have to work in everything. You know, because oh, coming up next is uh, <laughs> Beetle Ford Butt Wrestling. There we go. So, Oh, we're just leading off of this. I'm not going for it. Oh, we're, I, I thought you were going to say this for last, but oh, no. here we go. Fantastic Four. Number two. So tell us about where Dan Slott, we, we mentioned Dan yeah. Slott earlier, he wrote Spider-Man for 10 years, now he started, he's, he's on month two of yeah. being the Fantastic Four writer. It's fun, man. It, it, he, he's going back to that old school. Uh, the world's greatest comic yeah. magazine old school. Yeah. Uh, he picked it up right where uh, Hickman uh, left off. I mean, mm-hmm. They're off traveling, they're, they're, they're you know, exploring the multiverse, creating the multiverse. Uh, Dan Slott has this great like, sense of humor when it comes mm-hmm. to his characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's this, uh, you know, and there's a lot of stuff goes on, and uh, it's classic Fast and Four. I mean, a lot of, you know, you know what I, that's what I was thinking about the other day, was people always talking about how like, they can't do um, a good, they can't make a good Fantastic Four movie, and no one knows why. And someone brought it up, like, I don't know if you, have, have you checked it out, but there's that, that uh, Netflix uh, Lost in Space. Oh, I, I've watched that, but I, that's always been very, like, you know, Fantastic yeah. Four-esque, that kind of, like, family. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a family dynamic. And then that's and that's that's something that's something they've been really missing in the movies, uh, in all those Fantastic Four movies. Yeah, because like that that first one was like it, it was all about just Reed and fucking uh, uh, Doctor Doom, and now yeah. everyone else like just Galva, be hot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Johnny Storm, be annoying. Yeah. Ben Grimm, be angry. Yeah. Like, and then there was no there was no family. It didn't yeah. feel like a family. They were just they are four they were like four people who knew each other. It yeah. was like it was like friends. <laughs> we all have superpowers, all right here. And so that's what they really brought back in this book. Like it's it's a very it's a family book. It's Reed and Sue taking care of not just their kids of Franklin and Valera, mm-hmm. but they also had the Future Foundation with them. So they have all these other kids and apparently like not to give any away, but like time has moved a little forward. They're all like older. Like mm-hmm. like Franklin's like a teenager. Because uh, well, last time they were just kids. Yeah. Uh, during, during the Hickman book, yeah, yes. they were they were, they were little kids. So they've been going around for a while. Um it's pretty fun, like, and, and, and it's great. This book has a great moment where, like, Reed is like, now he's the father of a, of a teenage daughter, and it's just, you know, he, he's the smartest man in the, in the world. He still can't figure out how to deal no. with a daughter. Yeah. I don't know what to do. I'm super smart. And there's this great little scene where, like, they're on this alien world, and there's this dude, this alien dude. He kind of looks like a like like one of the characters from Avatar, mm-hmm. and he's totally flirty with with Reed's daughter and uh, with Valeria, and. It, and Reed's like, nope, nope, we gotta go, we gotta go. Suddenly, so we need to leave now, we need to leave now. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. And so, Stay away from my, my precious daughter. Yeah. So it's really cool. Like, that, that's something that's been missing with uh, just the Fancy War in general. In general, yeah. Because even that, that Josh Trank movie, that, like, they separated them all yeah. for like half the movie. Yeah. Like, Reed was being an asshole by himself yeah. <laughs> while the rest of them were, tra- were they all like trapped? In the oh, movie? Yeah, and they were using like the thing to like, uh, they're dropping them in like war zones or whatever. Like, yeah. Yeah, and there was like, wasn't there like several like year, like, yeah, years? Yeah, so years had gone by. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's where. Oh, yeah. See, I feel like maybe that's what's busy. Like, if they do the movies, they, like, they have to have they have to give them the kids. I think they just have to give them the kids to really make it a family. It has to be a family book. Because, yeah. well, even it was just the four of them, they yeah. were still a family. Like, the, 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 when when Lee and Kirby were doing it, they yeah. were still the. They're they're the they're the first family in the Marvel universe. Mm-hmm. They were they've always been like the world's greatest. Like, it was always about that dynamic yeah. between the four of them. 
functioning as a family. Like they, they weren't just a team. Yeah. You know, you know, Reed and Ben are best friends. Yeah. Johnny and Sue are brother and sister. Yeah. You know, like Reed and Sue are, or they were dating and then they got married. You know, it's like. Yeah, that's true. I, but I think that they, that would really push it though. Like we really did the, you know, give it they, they, to do a movie. Yeah, they have to like kind of establish them already. Yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah. Well, maybe when they, uh, well, because they, they got them back in, I mean, yeah. Marvel yeah. has them back in the control. Yeah. I would like to think that King, Kevin Feige is, I think he's really a nerd like us. Yeah. I mean, I, he, I, don't, I don't think he's overt about it. I don't think he's like, Yeah. clearly he's nerdy enough to know where to steer everything with all these Marvel movies mm-hmm. to, to help, you know, guide the, 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 these directors and writers. Yeah. I would like to think like when they eventually get to the, you know, Marvel Studios Fantastic Four in 2025. Yeah. <laughs> That they'll, they'll they'll do a family no. family game because yeah in Marvel I, I I can already see the DVD or the, the Blu-ray featurette it's like what is the core right? yeah. 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 yeah I can I can see yeah. Feige right now with his little hat yeah. and whatever his T-shirt his hat with a four on it hat with a four because they're doing Fantastic Four like I can already see it now. And so that, that, that that's what they what, that's how I brought back to this book. It, it really is the, the family, family dynamic. Yeah. It, it, it's always been. Yeah. Yeah. Like Vin Diesel would be a big fan. I, I yeah. should say uh, Dominic whatever Dominic Toretto yeah. would be a big fan of the book because it's all about family. <laughs> what's what's next on the journey into mystery? So oh, this is like a legit like yeah. For those of you who don't know, back in the day, there was no Iron Man comic, yeah. there was no Captain America, there was no Thor. They were just called Tales to Astonish and Journey into Mystery. Yeah, the Tales of Suspense. Tales of Suspense, yeah. and I feel like there, there were like four of them. Or, yeah, the, well, Amazing Fantasy. Amazing yeah. Fantasy, that's where Spider-Man came yeah. out of. So it was just a little bit. Marvel only put out four books, and like you get, you know, yeah. Captain America and Iron Man yeah. and Tales of Suspe- or, or Suspense or whatever. Yeah. Journey into Mystery was it Thor and Thor's book, yeah. that was Thor's book and I think he shared, wouldn't he share with Hulk and yeah every once in a while they would jump around I think whatever was popular they, they, they had to change, that character like dominated the book and took over mm-hmm. you know until they realized oh we could just give them their own title <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. like before like were they all like they were all kind of like the two in one I, I, yeah. I felt like you know, the, the two in one like Chip and Garth was fooling around yeah. they used to be like two stories where you get like yeah ten pages of one book and ten pages of another like, well I think the thing too was that back then they would just get stories they can get. Like, yeah, I don't think there was anyone that was gonna. I'm gonna write ten years of like Spider-Man. No, no, it was just whatever people were, were writing back yeah. in the day. Obviously, obviously oh, my, my friend Julian is learning. Oh, it wasn't always like yeah. that. It wasn't always an Iron Man book. Yeah, we just. And so like they've been doing this like I think the little, like, little serials. That was the best. Yeah, so, that 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 would be the best term. They were little serials. Like oh okay, adventure in adventure in Asgard. Yeah. Oh no, now adventure in old World War Two. Mm-hmm. Like, oh Iron Man flying around and it's like. All gray suit because they used to just be all gray, and but, later all gold. But with this one, they uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, so these are kind of cool. They, so these tales of suspense earlier in the year, which was mm-hmm. this crazy Black Widow, Hawkeye, uh, Winter Soldier uh, little uh, uh, storyline. Oh, cool! And so this one, they're uh, what? I can't, how do you pronounce the name of that living island? Krakoa. 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 Yeah. The living island. They almost killed all the X Men back then. Yeah. So this is like a, an early story of just regular people ending up on that island and, and not knowing that they are on a living <laughs> island <laughs> that's alive and trying to kill them. Yeah. It's like me killing ants on my arm. Ants crawl on my arm. Die. <laughs> so uh, it's a fun book. It's a fun it's, uh, little throwback story. Like a little like B movie, like kind of like early, like kinda, almost like King Kong. You know, like, right. like, like the Skull Island and all that. It's a fun little story. And it, it doesn't really... It's cool. I mean, you know, again, like, that's something we always talk about. That's like a struggle with trying to get someone into reading comics. Like, you feel like there's all this continuity yeah. that you have to, like, keep up with. Where this is something where, like, you can just jump in with, yeah. oh, I, I don't have to have read 10, 20, 30 years yeah. worth of a comic book to understand. I don't have to watch all the movies yeah. to understand what's going on. You can just jump into the story and just, oh, okay, you take it like a, like a brand new book. Like, yeah, I mean, oh. I feel like even if, like, you, I mean, I don't, I, I, I feel like not many people know about the Living Island, <laughs> and I think it's probably I think the last thing it was used was uh, Jason Aaron. Yeah, it was his son or something, right? Like, yeah, the the, the 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 grounds that the, yeah. the school was built, the, the Jean Grey school built on was uh, the son of Krakoa. Yeah. And so I think it's even better if you don't know because it's like you're wa- you don't know what you're getting yourself into. You know? Yeah, it's like I like, guess people walking into like, like some some movie, but yeah. it's like I can't think of a good example. Like, yeah. Oh, Kong Skull Island. You don't need to know all about. Oh, Black Mirror. There you go. Oh, 
Thank you, Judy. Like Black Mirror. Yeah, yes. Yeah. You don't need any continuity. Yeah. You just you pick it up as you go along. And you're like, all right. And you, you get the rules meted out to you as you yeah. as you need. If the information is on a need to know basis. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's, that's cool. cool. I like that. So maybe easy for someone who wants for, for someone who wants to get into comic books yeah. but doesn't want to have to like bog themselves down with all the luggage of, of history. Yeah. So we have a lot of independence. Let's finish up with DC here. We'll go with DC. All right. So we got Sideways. This is uh, my, my buddy Dan Dio's book <laughs> with the Seven Soldiers. Is is, is uh, Grant Ghost writing here? Uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> he's gonna be writing the annual. So oh. Yeah, okay. He's coming in and uh, working on some of that stuff. But uh, you know what? This book is one of those books that was under the radar. Like I always had it look cool because like was it uh, I forgot his name. Mark Rockefeller. Mm-hmm. Then Kenneth Rockefeller was drawing it. And it always looked really cool. The concept was interesting. He was literally like this YouTube superhero. Uh-huh. Like he was just, he had a suit, he had this power where he could teleport. And he just, all he wanted to do was make videos. And just, you know, show off, you know. How uh, very, uh, <laughs> how this targeting are, the current demographic. Yeah. Of, of young people. And so like, but, but we find out as the story goes on, that like, he doesn't just teleport. He's crossing through dimensions. And, at and one, then right here on the cover, we see the Seven Soldiers, yeah. something else that's a, something that Grant is work, Grant Morrison is working yeah. on the past. So he ended up in the Dark Multiverse, and I'm glad the Seven Soldiers were in the Dark Multiverse. Oh! And they're the Grant Morrison era Seven Soldiers. So like, they weren't affected by the New 52. They weren't uh-huh. affected by all that stuff. So it's, it's kind of cool. Like, I always like those characters. Yeah, because I, you know, I remember it, all of that happening. I, I remember when it was happening, but I didn't read any yeah. of it. Because oh, I forgot what it was. I think we were selling out of it, so like, yeah. I, I, back then I would always base my reading decisions. I'm like, oh, can, can I sit down and read all of it here at work? Yeah. <laughs> when I was reading the store, like, oh, this is selling out, then I'm not going to commit to it because, oh, we don't have all the issues? Oh, I can't have all the information, yeah. so I'm not going to read it. <laughs> Even though I, I missed the other one. So that was all grand, right? Yeah, all grand. And it was crazy because, so, you know what the, the basic uh, way it's pitched for that was? What was that? So, they were all these, like, little miniseries, but... Where they all seemed like they were like, you know... They're all separate, but they separate. turned out to be... They were the team that never met. So they were all dealing with the same thing. They didn't know it. And so, like, that was the whole the whole concept behind it. It was like, you know, it was this big force that was like... And he was using the, the concept to recreate, uh, uh, reboot a lot of these characters. They hadn't been using forever. Like, you know, I forget that even Mr. Miracle was part of that, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, but it was... Uh, was it, uh, uh, Shiloh Norman? Shiloh Norman. And he, he kind of... That's re- the black Mr. Miracle, for those of you who didn't know, to keep the, the, the black thing going. Yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> Shadow Armor, was, it was cool because... It, yeah, the inheritor of the, the Mr. Yeah. Miracle. And that was, that was a character that no one really used. Not since, uh, I saw, I'm, I'm probably say early 90s, yeah. not since like when I, in the, the pages of Justice League when yeah. Mr. Miracle was training Shiloh yeah. to, to take over the act room. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be a superhero. you got to keep the show going. Because yeah. he was, a, he was a, a Jack Kirby character. Like Jack Kirby introduced that character. But um, it was just like... Yeah, but it was always like no one knew, no one really knew about it. He was Mr. Miracle too, or whatever. Yeah. You know? And um, but it was such a cool concept because they were the team that never met. You know, they're all fighting the same thing, but they didn't know it. They didn't know it. And then it the, was like Bulleteer and Mr. Miracle and, was, and Uncle uh, Sam. No, it was the uh, Uncle Sam. The Manhattan Guardian. And, oh, the Manhattan Guardian. Yeah. It was in Zatanna. Zatanna. It was like a Clarion the Witch Boy. I hate Clarion the Witch Boy. <laughs> well, specifically, I hate Clarion the Witch Boy because of uh, Young Justice. No, no. So, it's, it's kind of cool. Especially if, if, you, if you miss that era, you know. The fucking Frankenstein. Yeah. All right. Let's see. All right, let's uh, We're going delving into Indie Land. If you oh. like Independence, oh well. Yeah, I know. This is an independent. This is your one of the things you love. Doctor Who. We got a, the Road of the Thirteenth Doctor. We got a book of the Twelfth Doctor yeah. right there. So they're, they're doing this thing. Like apparently, the Twelfth Doctor is going to premiere in comics before TV. You mean Thirteenth? Thirteenth. Yeah, Thirteenth. Yeah. It's going to premiere in the comics before TV. I heard something about that. Yeah. Uh, so what they're doing is they're doing these books. Where they're just like one shot stories about all these different doctors. And it, it's leading up. It's, it's going to lead up to the, the big event, which is going to be, I think, a week before the show. Oh, really? So yeah. a, week, a week before the, the, the Doctor Who series for the uh, season premiere. Yeah. Or I should say series. Yeah. Because the, in, in, in England, they're not called seasons, they're called series. Yeah. And so, yeah, so uh, the Doctor Who fan has been on TV for a while. This is, this is your book. This is your book. If you need your Doctor Who fix, it even has the new Doctor Who logo because they need the, the, yeah. the logo for 13. Mm-hmm. Nice. And the 12 story. I, I really like 12. Yeah. He was, he was the right amount of asshole. 
He reminded me like of using a better version of nine. Yeah. yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. They make reference to that in the show. <laughs> so I haven't had a chance to read this. I have no idea what it's about, but you know what? We're gonna talk about it. <laughs> oh, more more of the Sandman universe. Yeah. We got House of Whispers, not House of Secrets. Yeah. House of Whispers. So apparently, uh, from what I read, this is the first like original concept out of the Sandman universe. This is this, this is something that hasn't been around before. All right, this isn't something yeah. that's like based on death, uh, Sandman or yeah. death or anything of the yeah. Demi or whatever. This but is it's tied into different. it somehow. Right, it's, and, a, it's a part of the universe, but it's not yeah. something that we've seen before. And uh, from what I read, it has a lot to do with magic and stuff like that. So. It's kind of interesting. I mean, especially like, if you want to get a look at uh, that Sandman universe, like a different take on that Sandman universe. It's kind of a cool concept. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Sandman universe. I mean, like we discussed before, that it's a world I, I, I'm honestly scared of. Me too, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this universe is to us like reading a superhero comic to like your average normal person. It's like, whoa, that's a lot of continuity there. I don't know if I can keep up with that. <laughs> it's just dawned me right now. Yeah. I was like, oh, the way we we, we yeah. gaze upon this, I feel like someone like trying like, oh, I want to get a su- yeah. Superman or Spider Man. It's like, oh, there's a lot of history. Yeah, uh, it's true. I mean, I've been saving all those Sandman books, and I have I have a pile of them at the Oh house. really? I've been reading them, and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> I think it's just. Isn't it's, there like a begin? Are you starting from the beginning? Yeah. And you're still confused. I, I think it's just it's very high concept. Mm-hmm. Like there's a couple times like I read it and I read something else. I'm like, oh, that's what that meant. Okay, I get it now. Well, then would you say uh, you're gonna need a little, little bit of a pumper? Possibly. Possibly. You need to enhance your mind a little bit. <laughs> Travel into different realms <laughs> mentally. So, yeah. So the new Sandman book. I got, yeah, I flipped this one. I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. Do you know, I'm not even gonna touch it. No, nope. I'm gonna stay over here. All right, let's see. Well, what else you got here? I, I, I should have read this already. Yeah, you were here all day yesterday, all day today. Yeah, you still had, didn't read it. I had a chance to read it, but. Oh my God, Warren Ellis. <laughs> see, Warren Ellis is one of my favorite writers. He's not mentally well. No. He randomly posts proof of life photos on a, on Instagram just to let people know he's alive. Instructions. This book is valuable. Do not lose it. Details instructions concerning the use of this book will be issued. Watch for those instructions that you will know how to use your book. Your local war board can give you full information. Do not throw this book away. You may be required to present the book when you apply for such good books. <laughs> oh, Warren Ellis. So, like, Cemetery Pit. Is, like is this like his World War II or, I have no or idea. Like some sort of war movie? Oh, no, it looks futuristic. It's not World War II. Yeah. Uh, this is... I, I want to read this. Yeah. Oh, wow, cool. It even has all the dates. September 12th, October 12th. It has all the issues. Report for organ processing. Nice. Oh, Warren. I like Warren Ellis. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I... He's I, a cranky bastard. I don't remember when I ordered this. It might have been a while back. When it showed up, I was like, oh, cool. Like, you know, and it looks like a really classic Warren Ellis book. You know, like, uh, local frequency. You know, like that type of stuff. With like, all the espionage stuff. So, like, I'm really excited for this one. Um... This is the screen of Warren Ellis. There's instructions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love when there's instructions. <laughs> and it is, he's teaming up with the, the artist. They worked on a book called Trees. Okay. Did you ever read that one? No. That book was weird. Uh, I, I haven't read an Ellis book in a while. Yeah. It's been a while. Like, he, he's written a lot of porn. Yeah, he's written a lot of porn. Is Avatar still around with Avatar Press? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And then he's working on the Castlevania show on Netflix. Yeah, that's the last thing. I, I, yeah. Actually, that's the last Warren Ellis thing I consumed. The yeah. whole first season of Castlevania. Yeah. I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> I like it, but I'm not sure why. <laughs> but yeah, so, and then uh, the Trees is a weird book. Trees is about this, like, these big, uh, like, they look like missiles, and they crashed on Earth, and then we found out that they were, like, doing something to the Earth, and then so, over the decades, they became trees. And they looked like trees, but it was like, it was like an alien story. It was really weird. So they weren't Ents? <laughs> <laughs> like from Lord of the Rings? <laughs> we are trees. <laughs> So yeah, it's a new Warren Ellis book. You know it's gonna be crazy. Yeah, it's like if, if you want to read something that's just completely left of center. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not. If you want something not normal, you find yourself a book that says Warren Ellis on the front, and you read that. You read that. You read that. was me in Transmetropolitan back in college. Yeah. And Polly side major reading a book about poli- a comic book about politics. That was perfect timing. Right. <laughs> that was that was a very good symmetry there. I was reading that book. Mm-hmm. And I also was happy at the same time as a, a, a George W. Bush. Mm-hmm. We were all complaining a lot back then, too. Yeah. Good symmetry. Yep. Last right, one. What do you got? So, so this, this I'm is curious a, yeah, this as is a, to why this is the final book of the week. This is a trip. So you read this. I read this. Okay. And I really, I really enjoyed this one. That's good. 
I'm gonna give you the, the, the simple pitch. All right, so this is called the wrong earth. Okay. Okay. Here, here's your simple pitch. Simple pitch of the wrong the wrong earth. I feel like I'm gonna give you this pitch, and you're gonna want to read this book. Okay. Hit me. Batman sixty six. Batman sixty six. And Dark Knight Returns. Batman. Same person. Same hmm. person, different universes. Oh, different universes. They switch places. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I want to read this book. You're right. <laughs> That's I book. hate to be predictable like that, but yeah, no, you sold me on it. That's basically the, the premise of this book. It's like you have this like, like camp- campy version, like you have campy version, and you have angry, dark, dark. I hate the world yeah. version. Then hey, you're going to his world, and he's going to yours. Yeah, and they switch. Because like, like, each of them are on the wrong earth. Yeah. Happy go lucky <laughs> hero isn't like surrounded by friggin' get yeah, destruction. <laughs> Zack Snyder. Oh, <laughs> we're angry when it's surrounded by like. Hey, here you go, sir. Here's the phone to contact the police. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's basically the pitch. And it's pretty cool. Like, I really enjoyed it. Um, the crazy thing about it is that there is a prose story in the back mm-hmm. by Grand Marshall. Yeah, I noticed. I saw that name in the front. I was like, well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you love superheroes, you need this. If you hate superheroes, this will change your mind. Yeah. <laughs> Dragonfly, he's Dragonfly Man. Okay, yeah. no, you lost me already on that. <laughs> you lost me on Dragonfly Man. I was wondering, like, is he gonna call it the Stinger? <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking at the costume, like, is he the Stinger? Yeah. I have one more ace up my sleeve. What does he do? Freaking, uh, freaking Dragonfly laser repellent? <laughs> yeah, it, it's a fun read, man. I really enjoy it. And that's his Joker, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No, I shouldn't be reading on the air. Every time I do this, that's bad. I try to read on the air. This already looks interesting. Yeah. All right. I, I'm going to totally read that when we're off the air, mm-hmm. like a professional, <laughs> instead of being professionally unprofessional, which I excel at. Yeah. There we go. So, this has been. Oh, so these are the books for this week. If you're interested in any of these, especially, let's say the.